Though increasingly seen as outdated, biplanes still held several technical and operational advantages over the high-performance monoplanes that dominated the skies of World War II. These advantages allow them to remain effective in specific roles, despite their lower top speeds and greater aerodynamic drag. To the Italian sailors on watch at Toronto, the lumbering shape of a fabric-covered biplane must have seemed like a ghost from the past. On the night of November 11, 1940, 21 swordfishes flew at a mere 100 miles per hour into a maelstrom of anti-aircraft fire, and by all accounts, they were sitting ducks. With searchlights crisscrossed the sky and flak exploded around them, the pilots held their course. Yet the Swordfish's signature two-wing design was a marvel of structural engineering that distributed aerodynamic and G-forces across force bars instead of two. This allowed them to complete their torpedo runs and deal a crippling blow to the heart of the Italian fleet. In this daring attack, the Swordfish successfully disabled three battleships, while only two aircraft were lost. They proved that structural strength and resilience could be more decisive than pure speed or firepower. In the heart of a swirling dogfight of World War II, the Gloucester Gladiator was a bird out of time. Being the final biplane fighter of the Royal Air Force, it seemed hopelessly outmatched by the sleek, high-speed predators it faced. Although the Messerschmitt BF-109 was over 100 miles per hour faster, in the desperate close-quarters brawl, the Gladiator's apparent weakness became its greatest strength. With a terrifyingly tight turning radius of just 1,000 feet, the Gladiator could pivot on a dime and effortlessly outmaneuver faster foes, forcing them into a desperate tail-chasing spiral. In the battles over Malta, Norway, and North Africa, outnumbered Gladiator pilots leveraged this unique trait to hold her ground. Marmaduke Paddle turned what should have been a certain defeat into enduring lethality. Paddle famously scored at least 15 of his victories while flying the Gladiator. In the right hands, a biplane with superior agility could turn the most desperate situation into a triumph. In the heart of a swirling dogfight of World War II, a different kind of terror took to the night skies. The faint, haunting sound, the soft whirring of a soy machine, was a harbinger of the Polikarpa Po II. Piloted by the legendary all-female Night Witches Regiment, the Po II became a weapon of psychological warfare. Night Witches pilots would cut their engines and glide silently towards the targets. Before dropping their bombs on German concentration and the effect was maddening, the slow, low-altitude night attacks were virtually undetectable and impossible for German fighters to intercept. With stall speed of only 40 miles per hour, the Po 2 flew so slowly and turned so tightly that German fighters would stall before they could aim. The Night Witches flew an astonishing 24,000 sorties over the course of the war. While its bombs were small, with a typical payload of just 400 pounds, the relentless, unpredictable raids shattered troop morale and disrupted supply lines. By the end of the war, the jet age was coming, bringing with it speeds and capabilities that the biplane's design could never hope to match. Yet their legacy wasn't in winning the war, but in proving that even the most outdated tool can still be a vital asset in the right hands. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.